Hi, I'm Cynthia from Knitting Central and this is our Endless Waves Cowl design. Uh, we're very excited to show this to you because it is such a versatile piece. It is the softest um, one-ply cashmere from Art Yarn. It's all hand dyed and it's extremely luxurious on your neck. It just feels like someone is caressing your neck all day. Um, we love wearing it in the fall and in the spring with a blazer or sweater and then in the winter uh, it really really works to hold us closely and keep us warm but it's never really too heavy on the neck and I think that lightness with the warmth is what we love most about this. This is the Knitting Central Endless Ways Cowl but the pattern stitch has been called many many um, different things ranging from ripple stitch Missoni stitch, chevron stitch, rick rack, and there are plenty of other uh, names that this particular stitch goes by. So let's start by reading the pattern and we enlarged this section just so you can get a clear look of and follow along with us. This particular pattern stitch starts and ends with a star. Whenever you see a star it means that once you have completed all of these stitches all you're going to do on this row is repeat within the stars over and over again. Sometimes you'll see a stitch outside the stars at the beginning or at the end and you must work those only once but then within the stars it gets repeated over and over as I've just mentioned. Row 2 is very easy, it's just purl back so you have to really concentrate on row 1 and you get to relax on purl 2. So let's work this row 1. So the first thing we're going to do is knit two together. So we put our needle into the second stitch and we knit the two stitches together. And then we knit five. So no particular shaping or anything else, just nice straight knitting. This is three, four, and five. The next Grouping is an increase one stitch, a knit one stitch, and an increase one stitch. This is going to start the peak, the peak or the ripple effect of this pattern. So we're going to increase one by knitting into the stitch, but do not remove it from the needle. Pull it through, and then instead of removing it, you're going to rotate your right needle behind your left needle and knit into the back of that same stitch. So now you've just made two stitches out of one, you're going to knit one and you're going to increase again. Knit your stitch the way you normally do, don't remove it from the needle, rotate the right needle behind the left needle and knit into the back of the exact same stitch. And now we're going to knit five, two, three, four, and five. And the last part of this repeat is knit two. Now, I have placed a marker right there and let's talk about this. In this pattern you had a knit two. It took one stitch away. Then you increased one, you made a stitch. So those two have now balanced out and you are still at the same number of stitches. Over here you've increased one you've added one, but at the end you've taken one away. So again, you have remained at the exact same stitches. And I think one of the biggest problems that people have is that they never make themselves aware of how many stitches this repeat actually creates or actually makes. This stitch repeat consists of 17 stitches and it is extremely important to know how many stitches are in your repeat because that will help you to figure out quickly if you have a mistake exactly where it happened. And I have placed a marker here, actually a beautiful butterfly marker made by Deborah's Gardens and I feel it's very very important to make every part of your knitting experience a really positive experience. So I think you should always take the time to pick a stitch marker that you think is beautiful and that you might really enjoy getting to when you get to that part. My needles are these beautiful crafted needles that I found at a sheep and wool festival and I think it's just very very enjoyable to have all aspects of your knitting, your yarn, your needles, your tools, be something that you really enjoy. 
um, back to this marker, I like to place a marker in between my repeats. I know a lot of people think that they are expert knitters and they don't need to do this, but I find that when you make a mistake, and we all do, it is much easier to be able to look within a repeat, look within the markers, and then it's much easier to find your mistake. So now we're going to slip this marker from one needle onto the next, or you can do it just slipping it with your needles. And now we're going to work the same exact pattern, but our second repeat, our second area within the stars. And this is knit two together, and knit our five. We're coming up to our increased stitch, so to review, put your needle in, wrap it around, come through, do not take it off the needle, rotate your right needle behind your left needle, I'm just going to show that to you, and I'm going into the back of the same stitch, wrapping it like I do a regular knit stitch, and bringing it back. I hope that helped. I'll do it one more time for you. Knit a stitch, we're going to increase again. Knit into your stitch, come through, don't take it off the needle, rotate, get the point of that needle into the back of the same stitch, wrap your yarn like you normally do, and bring it through. I'll give you a little lesson in your knit two togethers and your increases all in one little video. And we finish up with our five stitches, and then we knit two together. So now, when I'm working this, if I have a mistake, and obviously there's many more repeats in here, I just did two repeats here, but you'll be able to notice there's 17 stitches. If you see 16 or 15 or 18, you know that something is wrong with your pattern that will be easily detected. So notice that as you increase the stitches, it pulls the peak up, and then you'll have your decreasing, pulls it down, and it creates this beautiful, beautiful, Ripley effect. Also, I really want you to take close note at this particular yarn. We are very, very careful to choose specific yarns uh, for our patterns, not only because we want it to be a perfect drape and fit, but also from a visual standpoint. So this pattern here, this, this section, this green, this beautiful olive green, is only one color. But because of the hand-dyed effect, you'll see that it creates great depth and it almost looks like it's a striped yarn. And you'll see it here in the eggplant and here again in every color, even the dark blue, you'll see this magnificent variation color. If these bands of color were just solid, it would not give the same effect. So always pay close attention when someone is trying to um, expose you to a pattern match with a yarn, why they're choosing the yarn that they do. And since this pattern is used so often, as I mentioned, a lot of times people will choose to put a novelty yarn, something sparkly or fun, in these thin rows here. But we chose to use the same yarn all the way through, but we did choose a color, in this case red, and then up above here white, to pop and make that thin line as important as the other larger blocks of color. The next row is pearl and we'll be right back in one second. So now I'm going to show you this technique, wrap and carry yarn from the pattern. And there's two ways that you're going to switch your colors. In this case, we have this beautiful bright green down below and the citrusy lighter green on top. We want to go back now to the green. And since I've only worked two rows of the lighter colors, I can wrap and carry the yarn as opposed to cutting it and weaving it. So here you'll see that there is the green, the bright green, and the light yellowish green. I'm going to take the bright green and I'm going to wrap it, I say 360 degrees around the yellow. And I'll do that again. It starts here. I like to take the green from underneath and wrap it all the way around. And what happens is now when I knit with the green, the yellow, you'll see, is going to be brought up with it. And that's very, very important. So let's pick up our needle, and you'll see it there. You'll see the wrap. 
and I'm going to start to knit with my green. And just be careful when you do a wrap and carry that the wrap part that's carried up is not pulling it all on the stitch that you're making or on the row below. And there you go, that's a perfect transition of color.